Hello everyone, this is going to be a quick introduction to computer-aided design using a web service called Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a uh, web-based platform that allows us to design 3D and 2D parts using a pretty simple and intuitive interface. Normally if we would want to do this, like let's say uh, we wanted to design a part that we wanted to 3D print. So I'm going to show you an example, um, we're going to make a mounting plate for the Raspberry Pi board. So if we wanted to do something like this, um, we would have to use some uh, CAD software and most CAD software is pretty expensive. So very popular professional ones would be like AutoCAD, SolidWorks, um, 3D Studio Max, and things like that. Um, that software is pricey, it's uh, hard to get, and um, it doesn't run in your web browser. So generally, um, if we want to 3D print something, we want to design a fairly simple part, and we really don't need to do like a whole mechanical analysis of a mechanism or anything like that, that those um, you know, more uh, fully featured uh, pieces of software give you. So Tinkercad is a web service that actually allows you to design your 3D components in a browser window, and it's actually really simple to use, and there's uh, some really good information out there. So this is going to be just a very quick introduction um, to Tinkercad. It's just tinkercad.com, but I encourage you to go and check out the uh, tutorials that they give you and also check out other YouTube videos to do more advanced things, because you can actually make some pretty impressive pieces in Tinkercad, but I'm just going to show you the basics of how it works and how to get started free to create an account and you can save all of your designs on there so you don't need to back them up on your local computer. You can also share your designs with your friends on Tinkercad. Uh, if you have their account name or their email address, you can you know, share different folders and different components. Suppose that we want to make a mounting plate for the Raspberry Pi 3. Basically just a flat plate the same size as the Raspberry Pi board itself and also with four holes for mounting screws. First thing we need to do is get the dimensions of the board that we want to actually design. We want it to be the same width and height as the Raspberry Pi board, so we can measure it ourselves, or we could just pull up the mechanical drawings, and that'll give us all the critical dimensions that we need. So if we go to the Raspberry Pi website, we can search for mechanical drawings, and uh, we can pull up a PDF of the actual board. So we can see here, if we zoom into this document, this gives us all the dimensions that we need to design our mounting plate. We care about the width and height of the board, the spacing of the mounting holes, and also the diameter of the mounting holes. So the width of the board is 85 millimeters, the height is 56 millimeters, and then we can look at the spacing of the mounting holes here in a little bit when we get to that part. And we can also see here that the mounting holes have an inner diameter of 2.75 millimeters. So basically what we're gonna do is make an 85 by 56 millimeter rectangle, and then we're gonna put holes in that rectangle that have the spacing of these uh, mounting holes here, and then those holes are gonna be 2.75 millimeters in diameter. Back here in the Tinkercad workspace, We've created a blank project, and it's given us a randomly assigned name of Amazing Crunk. That's a pretty cool name for a project, but it's not very descriptive of what we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and change the name by going to Properties, and I can just go ahead and change this to RPI3 Plate. When I click Save Changes, this will save the project to my account, and I can reference it in the future. And it also makes more sense when I look at uh, several of the parts that I have designed in my library. Now that the project is all set up, I'm ready to start designing my part. The way that Tinkercad works is you have these geometric primitives over here, like a box, cylinder, pyramid, sphere, and so on. And you put all those pieces together, and you can set the piece as either a solid piece or a hole. So basically the whole system works on combining these simple geometric primitives and kind of gluing them together. And then you can set them as a whole, and you can basically erase that, uh, that volume from the solid that you've designed. So what we're going to do is put down a box that has our 85 by 56 millimeter dimensions and we're going to set the thickness to about um, 5 millimeters or so. Now we could set the thickness to anything we wanted. And then we're going to select these cylinders and we're going to put four of them in there that are 2.75 millimeters in diameter to make the four holes. And then we're going to set those cylinders into a hole mode so that it actually cuts from our solid piece. When that's all done, we can group them together and that'll take the shape and aggregate it into one solid shape which we can then export into an STL file or whatever 3D format we care to export in. I'm gonna go ahead and make an 85 millimeter by 56 millimeter uh, rectangle. So I've just dragged the box down here and I'm just gonna line it up with uh, this intersection here on the grid. So you can zoom in and move around with your mouse in full 3D. You can also nudge the piece around using the uh, keyboard buttons. So up and down will make this go up and down, left to right makes it go left to right. I can also go down here to snap grid, and right now it defaults to one millimeter, so that means that every time I nudge the piece, it's going to snap to a one millimeter grid. But I can change this grid to much smaller increments or turn it off entirely to 
uh, move the cube around in a finer detail. So we want an 85 by 56 millimeter cube. So what I can do is I can manually drag this to 85 by 56 millimeters, or I can actually type the dimensions in directly, which often is uh, more handy. To type them in directly, you'll drag a ruler over here and you'll anchor that ruler to the uh, bottom left corner of your piece. And then you can actually type the directions and uh, type the dimensions in directly. So at this point, it has all the dimensions of my cube. It also has the XY position. Um, the XY position is at zero, zero. That's at the bottom left corner. Um, so I want the width to be 85 millimeters. So I'll just click here and do 85 millimeters. And then I want the height to be 56. So I'll enter in 56. And then that has the uh, left, right dimensions of the Raspberry Pi, the XY dimensions. I also want to set this thickness down to five millimeters. So I can just go ahead and drag this down until this indicator over here, the vertical size indicator goes down to five millimeters. Or I could double click on this number and just type in five directly. So at this point, I have an 85 by 56 millimeter rectangle, which is the same size as the Raspberry Pi, and I'm ready to start positioning my holes. The first holes I'm going to add are going to be the two left holes that are on the left edge of the board. That's because they're just going to be easier to place. And then I'll justify the two right holes when I add them uh, secondly uh, relative to the position of the left holes that I place first. So I can see here <clears throat> that the two left holes are 3.5 millimeters from the edge of the board. So if I look at this mechanical drawing, I'm looking for basically the spacing from the edge of the board here to the center of the hole. And I can see here um, this dimension uh, basically where these two arrows go, that space is 3.5 millimeters, and that goes here from the edge of the board to the center of the hole. So the, the very center of the hole of the 3 point, or the 2.75 millimeter diameter hole is going to be centered 3.5 millimeters away from the edge of the board. So that's in the vertical direction. I want to double check and make sure that in the horizontal direction it's the same measurement, and I can see here that it is. 3.5 millimeters from this tick mark to this tick mark, and that's also centered on the hole. And that's going to be the same for the vertical hole over here, 3.5 millimeters from the side. Uh, so I can go ahead and translate that into my Tinkercad design. In my design window, I'm going to go ahead and create a single 2.75 millimeter cylinder that I'll later set to a hole to actually cut the hole in this board. So I'll just grab a cylinder, drag it over here, and then I'm going to set this to 2.75. And 2.75. So now I have a cylinder that has the diameter of the hole that I want. Now all I have to do is place it in here and then I can set it in a cutting mode by uh, setting it to a hole. So at this point I could drag this around and I could try to eyeball it or I could try to um, you know, basically get this as good as I wanted to. But really the best thing to do is to just go ahead and calculate in XY where this component needs to go. So we can see here that the hole is 2.75 millimeters wide, and the coordinate system is going to be based on the uh, bottom left corner of the piece. So this here would be zero, zero relative to this piece. So since my coordinates here for the hole are relative to the bottom left corner, and I want this piece to be 3.5 millimeters from the edge, I actually need to have this bottom left corner closer than 3.5 millimeters. In other words, it needs to be 3.5 millimeters minus one half the width of this piece. And that ends up being 1.375 millimeters. So I need this position to be at 1.375 by 1.375. So I can go here, uh, I can click on the piece and I'm looking for the XY, so that's these dimensions here. So this needs to be 1.375 and then the other measurement needs to also be 1.375 and then that has the hole exactly where I want it. So at this point I have the bottom left hole ready and now I'm ready to get the top hole. Top hole, we can follow a similar process. Uh, first, I just need to make a copy of the cylinder I've already placed because it has the diameter that I want. So I'm going to select a piece and I'm going to hit Control C and Control V to do a copy and paste just like in any other operating system or program. And then I have a copy of my 2.75 millimeter um, cylinder here. So at this point, I know that the X position of this is going to be the same as this one, but I know that the Y position is going to change. So here in this block, it's 56 millimeters tall and this is 2.75 millimeters wide relative to the bottom left corner. So what I actually need to do is make this, uh, or position this hole here to be at 56 minus 2.75 minus the radius, and that'll put the uh, corner exactly where I want it. So that measurement ends up being, um, let's see, 56 minus 2.75 over two minus 2.75. 
So 51.875 um, is going to place this uh, buffered from the edge exactly where I want it. So my dimensions are going to be, or my position is going to be 1.375 in the X. So I'm going to click here and enter 1.375. And then the Y, we said that was 51.875. So we'll do 51.875. And then it looks like our hole is exactly where we need it to be. So looking back at our mechanical drawing now, we want to figure out where to place the two right holes. We can see here that the holes are spaced out from left to right 58 millimeters apart from each other, and that's relative to the um, center. We know that the position of this center is going to be 1.375. So we want this corner here to be at 1.375 plus 58 millimeters, and then we need to go back 1.375. So in other words, we want this corner here to be at 58 millimeters. In our design window, I'll do the same thing, except this time I'm going to actually select uh, both cylinders at the same time by holding the shift key, and then I'm going to do control C, control V, and now I have a copy that I can go ahead and uh, move together. So I want to go ahead and I'm gonna bump this over to the right a little bit with the keyboard. So I know now that my vertical spacing is perfect. I'm not gonna to have to change that because I copied these directly and it preserved the spacing. But I do need to change the X uh, dimension and I want that to be at 56 millimeters. Not the X dimension, the X position. So I'm gonna go here to this number and I'm just gonna enter 56 and then that should be exactly where we need the holes. So at this point we have our plate design and we have the cylinders placed but we haven't actually cut the holes out yet. So what I'm gonna do is select all of these, um, all the cylinders, and then I'm gonna go here to the inspector, and here I can change the color of the holes or any individual part um, to whatever color I want, and I, I can also change something to be in a hole mode. So when you select hole here, uh, that actually makes it cut, and it seems that I um, accidentally selected the bottom. So I'm just gonna go to undo, and I only wanna select the cylinders here, so I'm gonna be careful not to select the bottom rectangle. I'm gonna select hole, and now this is cutting out of the uh, plate here. So we can see that the holes are going all the way through. To be sure, um, I can go ahead and select all these again, and I can move them down a little bit. That way they go all the way through the plate, and I'm guaranteed that the holes are gonna cut all the way through this. So at this point, um, our part is basically ready. Um, now all we need to do is convert this into one single part or one single group, and then go ahead and export it into a file that we can actually um, use. So I'm gonna select everything just by dragging the rectangle over here, and I'm gonna select group, and that will uh, mesh everything into one single solid object. Now I can always click on this and select ungroup uh, to go backwards, uh, but generally the way that your workflow in Tinkercad works is you keep making more complicated pieces, and then you group them, and then you add them together, and then you keep um, grouping those together. So basically everything is made out of um, these geometric primitives over here that you have. Now Tinkercad has a lot of other features. I can also change um, the orientation of anything. So in addition to moving positions around and changing the sizes of uh, objects and geometric primitives, I can change their orientation as well. And the orientation can uh, be entered in directly through the keyboard just like these dimensions can. There's also different shape generators. Um, and some of these are actually scripts that you can use. So some of them will generate text and some of them will generate more complex shapes like polygons and things like that. Uh, but there are also some other items in here uh, that actually allow you to do things like design threads or design standard um, fastener attachments. So if we wanted to have, let's say, um, an actual screw go through here, like a three millimeter screw, a three millimeter screw is going to be three millimeters, three millimeters in diameter. So I could go ahead and put this hole a little smaller like it is right now, 2.75 millimeters. And then I could go um, somewhere in the menu here. I think you have to search for it in the shape generators and you can look for a thread generator, and the thread generator will allow you to specify the threads of whatever screw you want to use. So for example, if you were using an M3 screw, that would be a three millimeter diameter screw, those generally are gonna have a half millimeter pitch on the thread. That means that the threads are one half millimeter across. So you would be able to go to the shape generator, uh, enter that shape, and then that would bring us up a cylinder that had um, the thread cuts in it, and then we can position that just like we did the cylinders before. But we're not going to cover that in this example, but definitely check it out on the tutorials. So now we're ready to export this to be 3D printed or to be incorporated into um, uh, software or, you know, for some other purpose. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on design and then we're going to select download for 3D printing. This will allow us to export into an STL, OBJ, X3, X3D, or VRML. 
And we can also export this into a 2D design using SVG, that scalable vector graphics. So if we wanted to say uh, laser cut this out of acrylic, uh, we would want to export this to an SVG so that we can import it into the laser software because lasers only cut in XY. Um, but we're going to 3D print this. So we would uh, select STL. Um, most 3D printing, well, really all 3D printing software supports STL. That's by far the most, uh, the most uh, popular uh, file format. So we'll just click on STL and then that will download my file. And now this rpi3plate.stl file that I have uh, is all that I have to import into my 3D printing software.